Hi there, I'm Tim Ross from My Road Reel, and welcome to The Power of the Short. In this episode, I speak to globe-trotting independent filmmaker and My Road Reel judge, Genevieve Bailey, whose documentary I Am Eleven was a multi-award winner and a successful documentary. Tell me about how you got into filmmaking. I started playing with a VHS camera and shooting strange little special effects music videos with my siblings. I was about eight and playing with animation and interviewing my dog, all these things yeah, great. that I still do a little bit. Did you think when you were that age that it was something you could make a career out of? I don't know if I thought about it as a career. I think I wanted to be a forensic scientist when I was a kid and then I found out how much blood was involved and thought, no, no, I want to yeah. make films. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. Growing up and wanting to direct and produce and shoot, these are roles that are far more male dominant in the industry at the moment and there's a real push for that to change. How do you how do you tell a story in three minutes? When I was younger I made a lot of short docs and short films in a day mm. so I gave myself the challenge uh, for often for competitions or for film festivals where you have to shoot and edit a film in a day and I highly recommend that for for emerging filmmakers because it gives you that that constraint and I think sometimes limitations can be really good mm. because at the end of the day if this doesn't matter how good the lighting or the sound was or whatnot, if the subject or the story wasn't interesting, you didn't really have a great film. So for example, I made a short documentary called Last Time I Cried. And the concept was, I want to ask people when the last time they cried was. Mm -hmm. So really simple ideas, but actually I found such an amazing array of answers from people. Did you come to that point through trial and error or is it how you, your mind works? I'm a very simple person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the simplicity is where the beauty can grow. How technically involved are you? I'm happiest when I have a camera in my hand. Yeah. So I shoot the um, majority of my own work yeah. and I love cinematography and I, I feel most comfortable telling a story when my hand's on the camera mm. and I can talk to people with the camera really close to me. So the eye line, for example, is something that when I'm filming, my, the people in front of my camera are looking at me yeah. and it feels much more intimate. I think often people are, are told, you know, make films about what you know or make films of what you like. And um, I think there's also another element to that of make films about things you want to know more about. I want to make films about people that I can celebrate and introduce audiences to some people that, um, yeah, like I said, they might not traditionally see them on our screens. What sort of things can people do just to make maybe a Talking Heads documentary just fly a little bit more? Yeah, that's a good question. I think often people, you know, they focus on the talking head and, and, and um, that's an expression that's used when you're having a set up yeah. interview and they think, well, what else can we do? For me, I'm, I'm really passionate about a mixture of, of interview style and then observational. Mm. What about criticism? Criticism is good, depending on how it's delivered to you. But I think constructive criticism is great. And for me, I'm really open to showing my work before it's finished. Mm. You know, it's understandable. Some people are like, I don't want to show it till it's perfect. Mm. But for me, I'm, I don't want to wait till it's finished and find out something might not be working. And getting your work out there is important. Tell us about what you've done. So I always feel like 50% for me is making the film mm. and 50% is making sure people see the film. More and more now, with more people having access to technology, more people are making films, so we can't expect that the traditional ways of distributing your work are, are going to be the most effective for every mm. project. I never want to let not having a lot of money stop me from telling stories. Yeah. You have to be creative and, and sometimes you have to work for very little or no mm. money if that's a story you want to tell. I'm not saying everyone should do that, it's not sustainable to constantly not pay yourself. But for me, I think it's a balance between doing enough work that's mm. paid so that you can also fuel these passion projects if they're in you and they really have to get out. 